to call this meeting of um, the Budget and Finance Committee meeting postponed to today, uh, August the 1st from yesterday, uh, to order. And I want to thank the committee members for being here um, uh, early today. And let's start on with resolution uh, number RS 2017-803 uh, authorizes the mayor to submit the 2017-2018 annual update to the 2013-2018 Consolidated Plan for Housing and Community Development for the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. This had been deferred one meeting to catch up with uh, an ordinance also from MDHA. Moved and seconded and um, anyone, uh, seeing no one in the queue for um, discussion, I want to thank MDHA for being here. Um, all in favor of 803 to recommend to the council, please say aye. Thank you. Uh, 803 is recommended to the council. Resolution RS 2017 805, Councilman Pardue, Cooper, and Vercher, as the sponsors, approves an interlocal agreement between the Emergency Communications District for Nashville and Davidson County and Metro Government for services and reimbursement of costs pertaining to enhanced 9-11 services. We have a letter to approve from Councilman Pardue. Is there a motion made and a second? Um, seeing no one in the queue for further discussion. All in favor of 805, please say aye. 805 is recommended to the Council. Resolution RS 2017-806, Councilman Pardue Cooper is the sponsors, provides a port security grant from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security to the Office of Emergency Management to protect maritime critical infrastructure and key resources through deterrence, prevention, mitigation, or neutralization. Uh, we have a letter to approve from the sponsor. Is there a motion? Motion and seconded. Uh, I was actually, if there's somebody um, here from the administration, I was going to ask a quick question about which infrastructure does this cover? And is this, is this Corps of Engineers infrastructure? Is this Metro Nashville infrastructure? Um, I think OEM is probably best positioned to answer that okay, question. Drusilla, are Drusilla. you back there? Can you take that? Thank it's you. It's multi-jurisdictional, my understanding. Tech, the waterways of metropolitan government. This money is actually spent by the police department, but it's, uh, we apply for it through the Office of Emergency Management. The grant is $1.6 million, and the match portion is about $414,000. Um, some of the items that are purchased on this grant are, I'll just read some of it to you, enhancing improvised explosive devices and chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear explosive, that's our C-burn prevention response and supporting recovery capabilities, as well as overall port resilience and recovery capabilities. So we're protecting our waterways. Our, our waterways. And again, the infrastructure that's bridges and includes dams, or that is, when we say maritime critical infrastructure, is I that a lot? I believe it does include dams. I would have to do a little digging in this uh, narrative okay. to make sure. Okay, I appreciate that. If you if you didn't mind dig through that at some point, just let us know what that ends up covering. Okay. Um, Council Lady Gilmore. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I had a question too. I wanted to see is this the one that required it said a, a transfer of technology? Is this the same one? No. No. Okay. Okay. All right then. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Council Lady. Um, all in favor of eight oh oh, Council Lady Henderson. Thank you, Chair. My question was just um, the the match is four hundred thousand dollars in kind. That just means that's the labor of the police department to engage with this grant, or what is the in kind? Well, actually, match? they'll be using four hundred and fourteen thousand dollars worth of equipment, and that will be the match. The equipment serves as the match. And what are the equipment that we're using? Their their boats and so forth. Well, we have a a huge list of items. Um, I'll be happy to show you the list. And then another question, does Nashville have a port of record or are we just saying that it's our rivers and waterways that are navigable? 
Uh, well, my understanding is, is is the waterways. So just navigable waterways that people. Right. I'm I'm going to do some research as well to make sure what else it includes, whether or not it includes the dams, and I can get that back to you. Okay, great. You can just provide that clarity at the same time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Council Lady. Um, uh, seeing no one else in the queue, all in favor of recommending 806 to the Council, please say aye. Uh, 806 is recommended to the Council. Resolution RS 2017-807, uh, Councilman Party is a sponsor, approves the 2017 Homeland Security Grant from the State Tennessee Emergency Management Agency to Metro Government. There's a letter to approve from the sponsor, and is there a motion? Motion made and seconded. Seeing no one in the queue for further discussion, uh, all in favor of recommending 807, please say aye. 807 is recommended to the council. Resolution RS 2017-808, Councilman Sledge, Cooper and Henderson as the sponsors, provides a play spaces grant from the National Recreation and Park Association to the Metro Parks and Recreation to fund parks that provide access to inclusive play spaces and increased physical activity. Is there a motion? Motion made and seconded. Seeing no one uh, in the queue for further discussion. All in favor of recommending 808 to the council, please say aye. Um, 808 is recommended to the council. Resolution RS 2017 809, Council Lady Gilmore, as the sponsor, app approves a grant from the Tennessee Department of Health to the Metro Board of Health to provide food safety services, including restaurant inspections, foodborne illness complaints, investigations, and environmental health specialist network assessments. Uh, is there a motion? Moving. Motion made and seconded for 809. Seeing no one else in the queue for discussion, all in favor of recommending 809 to the council, please say aye. 809 is recommended. Uh, council Lady Allen, um, oh, jump in the gun, all right, okay, very good. Uh, resolution RS 2017 810, Council Lady Gilmore is the sponsor, approves a mosquito control grant from the Tennessee Department of Health to the Metro Board of Health to provide funding for strengthening mosquito control efforts. Uh, is there a motion? Second. Motion made and seconded, and Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wonder if someone from the Health Department could address what the methods for controlling mosquitoes would be. It's Tom Sharp. Tom Sharp. Sharp is right there, right in front of us. Thank you, Tom. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So this is a grant to they're going to hire four full-time folks to go out in the communities and test breeding sites, see what's there. We're looking for, what is it, the Aegis aegypti, which is the Zika mosquito, which we're trying to keep an eye out for. And they'll sort of do a survey, a, a census, as it were, of what we have here. Um, it's really, Dr. Ariel was excited about getting this extra help to get out and s surveil the system, basically. Thank you, Council Lady. Uh, Council Lady Gilmore. I think he, uh, Council Lady Allen answered my question. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Council Lady. Um, seeing no one else in the queue, all in favor of recommending uh, 810 to the Council, please say aye. 810 is recommended to the Council. Uh, Resolution RS 2017-811, Council Lady Gilmore is the sponsor, approves an intake diversion program grant from PetSmart Charities to the Metro Board of Health to provide low-cost medical services, behavioral vouchers, to assist in decreasing the relinquishment of animals to Metro Animal Care and Control. Is there a motion? Motion made and seconded, and Council Lady Wiener. Thank you, Chair. Could we ask Mr. Sharp to come up and explain a little bit about this? He would. Um, Council Lady Wiener, this one, um, 812. 811. Hang on, 811, 812, and I guess the other one didn't make it in here, are here by accident. Um, okay. This is an, uh, an application, approving an application for a grant. Because the Board of Health approves, uh, approves these applications, they, according to the purchasing guidelines, they don't have to come through here. We, you don't normally see these. If we get this grant, to answer your question, it would be a follow-up to a smaller one. It was $15,000 that we got this year. A lot of people will surrender their dogs because they have an issue that they can't afford to fix, whether it's heartworms or they got hit by a car or whatever, and they 
help folks with these medical needs so that they have an option other than leaving us the animal. But we, have, we don't have this money yet. So, uh, Tom, thank you. Uh, should, should we go forward with 811 well, I, and 812? Since they, they got here through a vapor lock in the system, okay. I, I'm not sure that, that having gotten here, that matters. Okay. I don't really yeah, know. Yeah, I was going to move to defer indefinitely, so right. second that so, motion. Uh, all in favor of deferring indefinitely, please say aye. Aye. 811. 811 is deferred indefinitely. And then equally for 812. Defer indefinitely, to, to please. To defer indefinitely. Uh, thank you, Council Lady. And thank you, Tom. Uh, resolution RS 2017-813, Council Lady um, Gilmore, Cooper and Hurd as the sponsors, approves a grant from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services to the Metro Board of Health to enhance access to a comprehensive continuum of high quality community-based care for low-income individuals and families with HIV disease. Um, is there a motion? Motion made and seconded. Seeing Council Lady, our sponsor, Council Lady Gilmore. Just wanted Mr. Sharp to come speak to it. Thank you. Uh, yes, ma'am. Madam Chairman, this is the second round of the Ryan White grant, which is one of the few, maybe the only one that comes directly to us from the federal government. It starts on, a, it's on an odd schedule. It starts on March 1st. They will generally say, this is your global amount, and they'll give you half of it. And in, in the middle of the year, they recalibrate to make sure to see what your patient load is, et cetera, and then they give you the other half of the money. That's what this is. Thank you. Do we um, administer that directly, or do we give it out to other nonprofits that specialize in HIV and AIDS? We administer it directly. Most of the money goes to service providers, doctors mostly. Thank you. Thank you, Council Lady. Um, seeing no one else in the queue, all in favor of recommending 813, please say aye. 813 is rec recommended to the Council. Resolution RS 2017-815 um, uh, approves a grant from the Tennessee Department of Labor and Workforce Development to the Nashville Career Advancement Center for use in establishing consolidated business programs and services. Uh, Council Lady Murphy is the sponsor. Um, is there a motion? Motion made and seconded. And Council Lady Gilmore, that was from the previous question. Uh, did, did you? Yes. Thank you. If, if someone's here from, uh, yes, I would like for them to speak about it. From the NCIC. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So the consolidated business grants are uh, what they're calling now their grants in the past for on-the-job training, incumbent worker training, and apprenticeships. Um, instead of giving us a little bit of money for each, they gave us $230,000 that we could divide up for all three, however, the business needs in the community saw fit. So these are eligible for any business in the community to either hire new workers, upskill their current workers, and if they're a federally registered apprenticeship, uh, to access apprenticeship dollars. So how, how does a business access those dollars? There is um, an online application, the Tennessee Department of Labor's uh, website, uh, that I can send around to everybody. And then that application comes to our office, and then we contact the business, make sure the application has everything it needs in there, and then we submit it up to the state. And is there a minimum uh, requirement for the business to apply for that application? No minimum for incumbent worker and on-the-job training. There's a $25,000 maximum they can be awarded, uh, but no minimum. Okay, could you please send that to us? Yes, I will. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Council Lady. Um, Council Lady mm -hmm. Wiener. Thank you. I just wanted to ask you a couple more questions. Sure. Are there any specific um, jobs that are used more than others, you know, that, that would be applicable to this, number one? Number two, are there any other specific criteria that need to be met? Um, for There's different criteria for the different grant types. Uh, the big things is on-the-job training, they have to be a new employee, they can't be a current employee. Incumbent worker training, they have, they have to be a current employee and they have to get a skills gain and a wage gain out of it. And apprenticeships, it has to go through the federally registered apprenticeship programs. Uh, we see a lot of this, uh, especially in manufacturing and advanced manufacturing. Um, in the manufacturing sector as a whole, their workforce has either been there for less than three years or is three years close to retirement. So they're really trying to upskill those younger workers before they lose the more seasoned workers. Would this be something appropriate for the healthcare sector? Uh, yes, it can be. Uh, certainly for the incumbent worker training, going from uh, CMA to a CNA or something like that. Uh, 
it's less applicable for the on the job training because a lot of people already got the training before they could get hired, but yeah, absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Council. Um, seeing no one else in the queue, all in favor of uh, 815, please say aye. 815 is recommended to the Council. Resolution RS 2017 816. It's a grant from the Tennessee Department of Labor and Workforce Development to the Nashville Career Advancement Center to administer programs and services. Um, is there a motion? Made. Motion made and seconded. Seeing um, Council Lady Gilmore. If you just could comment to it, please. Yes, thank you. If you would. Sure, so this funding, they, they break up the administrative funds for the consolidated business grants. So this is about 5% of that 230 that they give us to administer it. So it's very small just to administer the program. Thank you, thank you. Uh, seeing no one else in the queue, um, all in favor of 816, please say aye. 816 is recommended to the council. Resolution RS 2017-817, Councilman Elrod Hager and Glover is the sponsors, approves an agreement with the West Wilson Utility District to provide information needed to bill sewage services for customers in Wilson County. A motion made and seconded uh, for approval. Um, seeing no one else in the queue, all in favor of 817, please say aye. aye. 817 is recommended to the council. Resolution RS 2017 818. Councilman Elrod, as the sponsor, approves an agreement between the United States Department of the Army and Metro Government for phase six of the flood preparedness study. Um, is, uh, if there, someone would make a motion, is there a motion? Motion made and seconded, and Council Lady Gilmore. I was hoping someone's here to speak to it, and then I had a question about the transfer of technology. I saw it was a lot. Okay. Uh, uh, allocated to that and just what all that entails. Thank you. Jim Snyder, Metro, Jim Snyder, Metro Water. And with me is our friends from the Corps of Engineers, Mr. Craig Carrington, uh, to my right. And Council A, basically this initiative is addressing uh, the smaller tributaries within, within Davidson County. When we developed the uh, National Safe Tool, one of, the, one of the foundation pieces of that is the modeling of, of those watersheds. And so this is just a, another piece of that. Embedded within this request also is um, real-time information. So that better prepares uh, us during uh, flood events to be able to react quicker. And so as a pass of information back be between the Corps of Engineers and the local government also involved in this uh, initiative is the National Weather Service and uh, USGS. Yes, Councilor. So is the transfer of technology, is just, it's just the sharing? I'm just going by with the analysis that we have. Is it just the sharing of information? Is it what you call the transfer of technology or is it something else? It's both. I'm going to let Craig talk to the details, but it is a program that was developed uh, by the Corps of Engineers that allows real-time information. So Craig, would you like to come up and just a little detail? Sure. So, um, the technology transfer is, an, is a line item within the contract that allows us to, our engineers, to meet with Metro Water Service employees and uh, train them on how to use some of the software, how to implement it. It's kind of a train the trainer, but it allows us um, to be accessible to Metro employees as an event is either coming towards you or an event is underway, and they're running some model simulations to find where in Davidson County some of the threat could be. It allows that uh, the information and to call us and say, we've got, we're have got we seeing some things with the model. Can you explain this or some other types of support? So it would be technological support to uh, Metro employees by Corps of Engineers employees specific to the software that it's it's a proprietary well it's a, it's a Corps of Engineers nationwide uh, standard for modeling streams and we serve as as a way to educate Metro employees as they're actually running these scenarios. Thank you, Council Lady. Seeing no one else in the queue, uh, all in favor of eight one eight, please say aye. Uh, 818 is recommended to the council. Resolution RS 2017-819 authorizes the Department of Law to compromise and settle the claim of Tamara Ferris against Metro in the amount of $6,200. Uh, is there a motion? 
Motion made and seconded, seeing no one in the queue. All in favor of recommending 819, please say aye. Uh, 819 is recommended to the council. Uh, bills on second reading. Bill number BL 2017-829, Council Lady Karen Johnson and Vice Chair Lady Vircher as the sponsors, amends the Metro Code to require the Department of Public Works to replace at no cost to the homeowner government-supplied waste containers that are stolen, lost, or damaged beyond repair. Is there a motion? Motion made and seconded. And Council Lady Allen. Thank you. I just wanted to um, first ask a question about the fiscal note on this. I mean, it, it mentions the 2250 and 4650 per cart. Can I get somebody official to do the math and tell me if that's really $96,000 a year? Yes, okay. So I'm seeing heads nodding. So that, that's a fiscal note of 96000 if it goes back up to the, the number that it was. That, that seems like... Um, something that needs to already be in the budget. Is it already included in the budget? They receive a regular allocation for carts, so it would just have to be absorbed within that allocation gotcha. that they receive. Okay, um, so I, I think that's that's something to simply be aware of. Second, um, it's it's been on the um, on the public works goals for the solid waste plan that we, we spend so much time talking about when it comes up again to, um, to ultimately move towards charging people for having more than one trash cart to be emptied. We, uh, we instituted charge for the third trash cart in 2012, I believe it was, is that correct? Um, and have continued to delay charging people for the second trash cart just for, for fiscal reasons and trying to, I think we tried this year to add the second Recycling pickup. Um, so I guess maybe can I get somebody from Public Works to come address where we are in that goal and if this would would be detrimental to that. Thank you. It is um, one of our goals to eventually sort of mirror what happens in the general service district. In the general service district, if you are contracting out for trash collection, you get one trash cart. Uh, you don't get multiple carts. In Nashville right now, uh, residents can have multiple carts. If you've got uh, three or more carts, there's an annual fee that you pay. And our goal is once curbside recycling becomes more frequent, that people can not feel it's a hardship to have once a month, we also want to institute a fee for people who have more than one cart. So that is something we plan to do. On, if, I don't, if you don't mind me saying on this legislation, uh, we would prefer that this not uh, be approved. Get it, giving away carts for free, as you can see from the fiscal note, when Public Works was giving away carts at no cost during the time when our contractor paid for uh, the carts, uh, they were you know at 2,500 carts a year. When people started paying, the carts significantly decreased. And that is partly because people are then a little more responsible about how many carts they ask for. We always offer free recycling carts. And what we really want to do is to get people to take advantage of those free recycling carts and not just get more and more trash carts. And Thank one you. more question, if I might ask. Sorry. And can you talk about repair to existing carts? For example, what happens if the squirrels eat holes in the top or the bar breaks or things like that? Yeah, carts are repaired at no cost to the resident. If they are damaged, you know, the wheels or, or the, the little bars rust or something like that, we come and we repair at no cost to the resident. Thank you. Okay, I, I, I appreciate the efforts to help residents deal with their trash issues, but I'm, I'm concerned that this is not consistent with our, our goals to, to move recycling forward. So I'm having a hard time supporting this one, but under, understand the concerns of the sponsors. Thank, thank you, Council Lady. Uh, Councilman Glover. Thank you, Chair. So if I understood correctly, and Chair, if, if you don't mind, I'm going to go back to Public Works and ask them, did I hear them to say we, they would prefer for us to defer this and, and leave this alone right now? Well, uh, Sharon. <laughs> yes, that is correct. There's a couple things that I think we would like to try instead of making this change because the, uh, the fiscal cost is a little unpredictable. We would like to, because part of the issue is around people who purchase our house. If you purchase new construction, you get a cart, because this is the first time that address has had a cart. 
if you purchase a uh, home that had a cart and maybe the previous resident stole it, took it with them, which sometimes happened, or if there was rehab, the company that comes in to do the rehab takes the cart, we do not want to um, include that type of cart uh, or that type of situation in getting a free cart. What we would like to do is work with the Middle Tennessee Realtors Association and some folks like that to try and get the word out to people. When you're going through the closing, make sure that you understand or that, that the realtor communicates to the home buyer, make sure the cart's there. The cart is just like a lot of other uh, utilities. You want to make sure that your house has, you want to make sure the house also has that cart. Well, with that, with that in mind then, Chair, I, I'm going to ask to defer indefinitely on this uh, until the uh, public works can talk to the sponsors on it and ask for, for where it goes. I will tell you, one of the things that, that I kind of like being in the GSD versus the USD is that we do pay for our own. We do watch out for the stuff, and, and it doesn't seem to be quite an issue. So uh, with that, I, I will move to defer indefinitely until they have an opportunity to chat. Motion to defer, is there a second to the motion to defer? There is a second. So a motion and a second to defer, and I see Council Lady uh, Bircher. Council Lady. And then what, what we have before us is the motion and a second to defer your in, in, in your and Council Lady Johnson's bill. Currently that's the, the motion in front of us. Thank you, Chair, and, and I had my, my button pushed some time. There is a substitute oh. uh, regarding this, and the substitute does address um, all those concerns um, that Public Works just indicated. So then I'm going to ask, Chair, can they address that if, if, in fact, because I just heard them stand up and say they would prefer for us to defer it. So if they know about it, I would like to hear the answers. Um, yeah, uh, let, if we'd let our council make a comment the, first. And the then. substitute is a caption change. It just clarifies the intent of the underlying uh, uh, language. It does not alter the text of the language uh, appreciably uh, with respect to the concerns that expressed by Public Works. So uh, it may make sense to include the substitute and pass it and then consider the deferral, but the substitute simply clarifies. It's a housekeeping change to the caption. Okay, so apparently I'm still confused because uh, does Public Works understand the substitute and does it make any more, I guess, does it make any more difference than what we originally heard and do they still wish for us to defer the bill? So, Councilman, uh, <coughs> let, let us pass your question on to Public Works. Thank you, Chair. Specifically about the substitute. Yes, we still would request the deferral. Okay. Then I will renew my motion. Please defer indefinitely. All right. Um, Thank you. And then, um, Council Lady Versher, you had the floor, uh, Councilman Glover. If um, uh, Councilman Mendez is next in the queue, uh, if, but I wanted to make sure that you had said everything that you wanted. Yes, we'll, we'll support it and, and work in conjunction with, with Public Works. The concern is, is that many neighbors, um, as indicated by, by Public Works, when they purchase a home, um, they feel like they're being taxed twice. They're paying property taxes, but um, when they realize that they do not have a, a receptacle, then Public Works um, uh, requires them to actually purchase something when they feel that this should already be coming with the property. So I think this is a, a doable solution for us to come up with so that um, our, our taxpayers are really feeling that their, their dollars are going towards providing the services that they need within their respective neighborhoods, but not opposed to a deferral so that, so that we can iron all the details out. Okay. Uh, Councilman Mendez. I was just going to ask whether this is an indefinite deferral that this has been deferred previously, so it's not – has it? Um, well, I'll just ask, is this uh, committee's killing it or it's going to the council to vote on? No, at most it would be a one meeting deferral if it was done by the committee. But my understanding is the sponsor is, is in agreement with this. So this is not over the objection of the sponsor. So it would be a one meeting deferral. All right, thanks. All right, uh, this pertaining to Councilman Glover's motion. And, and so therefore, Mr. Jameson, let me make sure I understand. I, I, I move to defer indefinitely simply because I, I think they need some time. I mean, if, if we need to say a one meeting deferral, I really don't care uh, on the semantics of it, how we do it exactly. Uh, but 
I, I do believe that there probably needs to be a little more ironing out of, of how we address this. It's, so. it's just a quirk of the phrasing of Rule 24. A, a deferral by a committee means a deferral at the regular meeting for one meeting, even if it's an indefinite deferral by the committee. So the sponsor can determine tonight to defer it indefinitely or defer it again at the next meeting. All right, then chair, then chair, I, I will move to defer one meeting. That way we keep everything within the, the, the guidelines of how our rules operate. And so I, I, I changed my motion to defer one meeting, please, sir. One meeting and um, there, is it, there is a second to a one meeting deferral and agreement by the sponsor, okay? Um, Councilman Mendez, have you any more to say? Councilman Glover, then seeing no one else in the queue, all in favor of a one meeting deferral, please say aye. aye. And 829 has a uh, one meeting deferral. Um, bill number 2017-830, Council Lady Vircher Elrod, uh, are the sponsors, authorizes the acquisition of right-of-way easements, drainage easements, temporary construction easements, and property rights for purposes of the Antioch Pike Richards Road sidewalk improvements. Is there a motion? Yes. Motion made and seconded. Seeing no one else, no one in the queue, all in favor of 830, please say aye. aye. 830 is recommended to the council. Um, bill number 2017-833 um, adopts the 2017 Joint Assessment of Fair Housing for Metro and the Metro Development and Housing Agency and authorizes the mayor to execute a memorandum of understanding with the Metro Development and Housing Agency, formalizing each agency's respective responsibilities. Uh, is there a motion? Move. Motion made and seconded, and seeing no one uh, in the queue currently, all in favor of recommending 833, please say aye. aye. 833 is recommended to the council, and with that, that brings our agenda to an end. Uh, for the committee's information, we uh, yesterday had scheduled uh, an update from procurement with the Griffin and Strong consulting firm uh, on the um, uh, minority business hiring practices in Metro. Uh, it is currently scheduled for uh, the week of the 14th and probably on the 14th. So we'll be getting back to that update uh, probably in two weeks' time. Uh, Councilman Glover. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Mr. Jamison, I'm going to ask a hard question, I, I believe. I've really wrestled uh, over the last couple of months for what, a, what exactly is our job on this committee and what exactly do we do and what exactly do we, I guess, have a change upon with regards to how the, our government works. And so I, I'm not asking you to answer the question right now. But I would ask that over the next couple of weeks that we really kind of analyze what is our purpose, what, what do we do, how do we understand the charter, how do we do our job to effectively represent the people that we're elected by in each one of our 35 districts. And so, therefore, if I could get some clarification for myself and any others that may be interested in this, uh, to understand what exactly can we do as we begin the next budget process in a few months, and what exactly is our job to represent the people we're elected by? Um, and, I, and I know it's a very broad question I'm asking, but I have been here for several years now and was also on the school board, and I just don't see that we really <laughs> I, I don't see that we're that effective uh, sometimes in what we do, and I'm not trying to be rude, but I'm just being very candid that I don't see that we're very effective. And so I would appreciate if I could understand what our job is, what, I guess, latitude do we have in the charter to effectively make uh, a difference in the budget, and then more importantly, um, the, understand that the ruling that if 21 of us can't come together by, I think it's June 30th at midnight, then the mayor's budget goes into effect. And I, I think I'm correct on that. Correct. Okay. So very broad question. And if you could kind of wrestle with that a little bit, I would appreciate an answer. And, and maybe perhaps if you don't mind, Mr. Chair, and I'm, I'm sorry for catching you off guard with the question, but if you don't mind at the next meeting, I would just really like for us to delve deep into what we do and how we do this. I, I can't 
begin to answer that today, but I, right. would, I would say immediately two, two thoughts for uh, your consideration. Um, early on, uh, the council deliberated the role of committees and made a very conscious decision not to emulate the committee process at the state legislature, where a bill could literally die in a small minority back room um, uh, attended committee meeting. Um, and but so yeah, we do that with Rule 24 on occasion. On occasion, but not to the eventual death of the bill. Um, mm -hmm. And there are bills that uh, that eventually will see the light of day if the sponsor so wishes, regardless. And that is not always the case. Um, the other thing that is a constant um, concern for council members, you and others, is how the charter rules were uh, addressed when the budget was nowhere close to the $2 billion it is now. And that is just a struggle, not just for the council, but for every department. And finance struggles throughout the year to meet deadlines that are 50 years old. We are doing our best. Council Lady Weiner has spearheaded efforts to tweak the rules in terms of timing to the best we can so that you are not flooded and inundated in May and June. Um, because we know your schedule doesn't permit a lot of discretionary time in that period. But it is a constant struggle that not only this council feels, but every department feels and um, worthy of a, a review. Chair, thank you for indulging me the question. Well, no, I'm, I'm grateful for the question. I think you always have to evaluate whether we're doing the job that the people sent us here to do. Um, thank you for the question. And then with that, oh, uh, Council Lady Henderson. Uh, thank you, Chair. May I respond to Councilman Glover's suggestion? Um, I, you know, I guess what I would ask, perhaps, Councilman Glover, is that um, if you feel in the same way that I think uh, Council Lady Weiner asked for us subsequent to the budget process, if we wanted to provide um, suggestions, right, having gone through the process last year, having gone through the process this year, you've been through the process a few more times than we have, so I sense your uh, frustration, but rather than putting it to Mr. Jamison in kind of a broad sort of a way, if there are things in particular that, I mean, I would suggest it might be more constructive if you have a particular proposal or suggestions that you want to make, um, that that could be done maybe within the construct of the conversation that Council Lady Weiner and Chair Cooper is having. I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm not clear on what it is exactly you're asking, and I think because of that, I don't know if it'll achieve what you're hoping to achieve. So um, I wonder if you might be willing, based on your uh, concerns, to propose something in particular. May I, Chair? Please. Thank you. So here's my frustration. If you look at the charter, and the reason I'm asking Mr. Jamison to help us understand exactly what our role is and exactly what we can do is to kind of form, are we able to get information more rapidly than we were able to get for the last several, several years? Can we get it perhaps? I mean, one of the reasons I asked for the uh, resolution to pass that whenever the department heads ask for capital improvement or capital spending, we, we get to see those things simply because it does happen rapidly. When, when, when the budget is given to us, and I think, uh, Mr. Jamison, it's, what, what is the actual date the, the mayor has to give us the budget? May 15th. May 15th, okay. May, well, sorry, May 1st the, on the presentation, CA. May 15th on the CMB. The capital budget on May 15th and the, the operating, operating budget on, May, on yeah. May 1st. And so we literally spent <laughs> almost $3 billion in 30 days and so, therefore, that, that's why I'm asking for an analysis to, to give us or give me, and, and frankly, Council Lady, I'm, 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 I would love to have the conversation. I just need to understand with inside the uh, charter what it is exactly we can do in order to uh, kind of escalate the timeline on what we get, how we get it, and how we can actually respond to it. So not, not to be evasive to, to try and answer her question, I just think you just did answer it, Mr. Jameson. We have a very short timeline. And so I'm asking, is there a way, I guess to, to narrow down the question a, a bit, is there a way we can kind of spread that timeline out a bit? And I don't know, if the, under the charter, I just don't know if we're able to or not. Well, uh, let me shift over to Council Lady Weiner, who I know has been giving a lot of thought to 
these very same questions. Thank you ever so kindly, Chair. Mike, would you please do me the great service of explaining as briefly captioned as you can what we're getting ready to present that may address some of what Councilmember Glover is concerned about? Uh, several months ago, Council Lady Wiener was tasked by the current budget chair, Councilman Cooper, to essentially look at the timelines we are dealing with and propose um, a variety of tweaks to the disclosure of information that we receive. Uh, not to the eventual deadlines, because we can't do that without a charter amendment, but working with uh, the finance department and keeping in mind that simply making a deadline easier for us doesn't make the picture any better if we, if we rush finance to their detriment. But with their agreement coming up with, and this is still being ironed out, but um, coming up with an agreement that, for example, the capital spending plan, um, since 2014, that has been passed in June, but in previous years, it was passed all over the map. It was as late as September, October, even December. That gave some breathing room to council members in between the operating and CIB to catch their breath and then move on to the capital spending plan with a built-in sense of what was in the CIB. That's not set out in the charter, it's not referenced in the charter, and so the council working with finance and the administration has some latitude to schedule that in a date certain with some more scheduling certainty for the council and a little bit more time and, and breathing room after the two big budgets. As well as backing up some of the other things that we're doing and throughout the year when we're looking at capital expenditures, giving us a little bit more time to evaluate those than what we currently have. And we'll be presenting all of those things together at what point, Mike? So that'll be part of, we've, I think we've agreed to do this as a matter of rules, the council rules, um, rather than ordinance, because if we establish it by ordinance and then something comes up, some reason to, to not want to enforce a particular ordinance, we might have our hands tied. So at least start with rules revisions and do that. The vice mayor will be announcing the new rules chair shortly and then submitting what we would typically do is submit any rules changes that have come up through the year, including those that are being proposed by Council Lady Wiener as part of that process, and I'm anticipating we'll have those adopted by September. So a, a, time, a timely question, but focused on how we can do our job better, and all so, good ideas are welcome. So I do not want to, uh, if, 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 has the Council Lady finished? I, I'm not sure if she's finished her questions, Chair. Uh, Council Lady? <clears throat> yes. Okay. okay. Then. Then let me close with this statement, if I may. As we were preparing to go through the capital spending plan and looked at it, I mean, we heard from budget, or we heard from the finance department that there were deadlines, there were, there were discounts negotiated, et cetera, et cetera. What I'm trying to figure out is how do we not get into that position again? Right. Just like with general, just like with multiple. Right, but you can't blame them in a year. I'm not we, blaming anybody. Well, I, I, I'm simply saying, right. how do we not get ourselves in this fix? And I didn't mean that you were castigating them in any way. What I'm saying is that with a finance department that has historically understood that the capital spending plan for the past four years has been passed in June, earlier in the year when they're negotiating closing dates with attorneys and third parties and other sides of contracts, they would quite understandably say, we have to have this wrapped up by June or have a closing date by June, because that's when the capital spending plan was gonna pass. Now, we've been in negotiations with them, they understand this is in the works, they understand not to say this to the parties that they're contracting with, any closing dates that would be fixed on a scheduled June passage of the capital spending plan. And then we'll, I mean, it's gonna take time, just as it took time to get to this somewhat difficult predicament in the first place. But I think by this time next year, we won't have a spending plan that's breathing down your neck while you're trying to grapple with the CIB and the operating budget. Okay, well, again, I'm not pointing fingers. I'm gonna be saying I think that we need to step back, and that's why the original question was, what is our job? Uh, to where I fully understand what our job is, to where I make sure the people who elect us, we actually do what we're supposed to do. The, the so. frustration you feel is, is endemic. When in 1963, if you'll go back and look at the budget, it's maybe this big. And they had the same amount of time to consider a budget that you now get that can't fit in a three ring binder. Mm -hmm. It's just not fair, but we can't make the year any longer. And I appreciate we can't make the year any longer, I'm simply asking how do we maybe bring bring a, uh, a date to us a little more um, timely 
where we have a little more time to digest that which is brought to us. Agreed. So that's what, so if, if I'm, if I, if that's the question I'm asking, then I guess that's it. How do we move the timeline back somewhat to where we get it a little, a little sooner than we have, where we have a little more time to digest it and do our job properly? Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Back to Council Lady Wiener. Councilman Glover, my last comment will be stay tuned because I think you'll be well pleased with what we've come up with, at least in the short term. Okay. Um, thank you both. Uh, thank you for having this Tuesday budget and finance meeting. And uh, with that, uh, I declare this meeting adjourned. <laughs>